Let's welcome the Master David Chancellor from Boston to share his knowledge and wisdom and his practice about Chan Shi Jing. Thank you, David. Well, thank you very much. And uh, first of all, thank you all. Uh, I'm very honored to present today. Uh, as uh, uh, was mentioned, my name is David Chandler. And um, I studied with Master Joe a long time ago. I, I, I had a very interesting experience. My very first meeting with him, I was off living in New York as an actor, uh, professional actor, and I had I was a young man, I had just come out of college, got invited to be a professional actor by a by a Broadway director, and so anyway, I got to New York, and then I found Master Joe's book the Tao Tai Chi Chuan, and I went to see him. And in that first meeting, which was really challenging for me to get there, I took, like, I can't tell you how many different modes of transportation. Um, but when I got there, I was walking the last little bit, so I got there pretty warmed up. And uh, I, when I approached him, he said, okay, what do you want to learn? And I said, oh, what are my choices? And he said, Chen Su Chen or breathing. And I said, oh, Chan Su Chen. And he goes, oh, too bad. Breathing more important. So uh, I, I chuckled, of course. And uh, uh, at the same time, uh, I thought maybe if I'd said breathing, he might have said, oh, Chan Su Chen, more important. No, I don't think so. Breathing is the most. But anyway, um, so I have a slideshow for you that I want to share. All right. So Ladies and gentlemen, um, so this presentation is on Chan Su Jing, and it, I believe, is one of the most profound aspects of Tai Chi. Um, and I, when I studied with Master Zhou uh, in the way that I did, one of the first things that he did was, uh, or one of the ongoing things that he recommend to all of his students, and certainly to me, is to continue your research. And so I did, I continued to work on um, the Chan Su Chen in, uh, by studying with him, of course, and then also out on my own uh, with other teachers, whenever I ran across something that, that made sense. And then eventually I turned it into this set uh, of, uh, of reeling silk exercises that uh, basically work through every joint in the body. So. Um, uh, in, in some schools, they would do the hands and the feet, and that, sometimes just that. And so I basically applied it to all of the, the major joints. So um, one of the things that's important about this is that our galaxy, the Milky Way, is a spiral structure with a black hole at the center and a vast number of stars and solar systems like our own and different spiraling around it. Our sun is spiraling around the center of our galaxy because it's part of our solar system, the center of our solar system. And while our planet is spiraling around the sun, it too is spinning. This is, and, and, and our, our, all the planets are spiraling around our sun and the planets themselves are spinning as they spiral. So what we're talking about is that this is the structure, this spiral energy pattern is the structure as well as the action of our Milky Way galaxy. So it's spirals within spirals. So this image of the galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy shows you that. And what's interesting to me is the black hole, a black hole, if you've ever looked at any material about that, has two polarities, right? It has this, uh, you could say an up and a down quality where uh, fluid or water uh, is actually emitted, which is kind of odd since everything else gets sucked into a black hole. So anyway, we have this spiraling energy that is our galaxy. But we also have that same spiral energy when we come uh, down onto the planet's surface like hurricanes and cyclones and the like. And they are opposing energies of hot and cold water. And when they meet in a particular fashion, they then start this spiraling energy and a super 
natural force is released. Now, if you've ever been in the eye of the storm, you know that at the center of the, 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 this wild, outrageous force that's spinning around the outside, the very center of it is very calm. And uh, so uh, I think to what we as Tai Chi players require at the center of our forms is that same very calm. So the chaos can be happening around us and we can be centered is part of a super nature, part of our ability to awaken to that super nature. Now, when we compare them, they're the same structure. There it is right there. All right. So that spiraling energy also shows up. And this is an actual photograph. It's very bizarre, but it does apparently happen at times. Uh, but they're very minute energies on the planet, like this is called spirogyra, and it's a type of algae. And you can see, if you look closely, that it is utilizing that spiral energy like we've been talking about. So the spiral energy shows up organically in a multitude of forms. And uh, so like this is a money plant, which I think is a bamboo type of thing, but I'm not sure. And uh, a flower, cacti, sun, a, a daisy, a rose. These are all following that same spiraling energy pattern. And it's partially because of that rotation of the sun. So the actual structure comes out of the movement and the movement comes out of the structure. So here a cabbage is cut in half and you see that spiraling energy pattern in a pine cone. And what's interesting, if you look at the uh, pine cone structure, when you start to count it, you can, you can count it around and it, it's an interesting uh, thing because all of this goes to the golden mean. All of it, each one of these structures is uh, has a, a quality of that golden mean, which is that spiral energy that is like perfectly aligned with what is uh, most addressed or thought of as being beautiful and powerful. So when we get down to insect life and the and and so forth, very close to the ground stuff, you see this spiral pattern showing up in nature. Here's a snail with that same sort of structure. The nautilus seashell, larger kind of, uh, of sea creature that uses chambers that flow around in the same kind of spiraling pattern. And you can see even here, there seems to be and is this quality of something dark and light showing up in the growth of this particular uh, shell. And here we have a snake climbing a tree. It's a rather large snake and it's a very intense thing, but you'll see it in the next slide that that spiraling energy is a part of one of the creatures on the planet that has lots of stories going back to primal periods of time. And again, reptile's tail, exactly following that same kind of pattern in uh, higher organisms like uh, like uh, mammals, the horn growth, the elephant's trunk, uh, a profound quality. And of course, inside of the trunk are two nostrils, right, that go up into that space. You have on our own body and our own person, we have the crown chakra at the top of the head and slightly back. We have the uh, the spiral energy pattern showing up in our hair on babies' heads. You see it in the structure of the ear. The structure of the ear follows that same spiraling pattern and in alignment with the golden mean, the golden ratio, with Fibonacci numbers included, which is a whole other talk. Now, that same ear, we have acupuncture points that are connected to every portion of the body. This is a, a particular uh, set of uh, points for dealing with uh, uh, PTSD and alcohol and drug addiction. It's very helpful for that process. Uh, inside the ear, the cochlea is a spiral. Here it is once more, uh, again, over and over again in our own bodies as well as throughout nature. 
When we look at our hand, if you make a, a fist and you look at it like this, you see that the structure is that spiral and it is by the fingers, the tip of the finger, that area, that first knuckle has a particular measurement, the second one a little bit bigger, the third one yet again, and it follows the Fibonacci numbers as well. So it is following that same pattern. And lo and behold, even if you look at your own fingerprints, you will see that that spiral is encased there in most cases. You see the way a fetus is in the womb and compares it to certain galactic structures and so forth. And again, following the golden mean, that quality. Now you could also argue that the, the, the two hemispheres of the brain are much like that spiral energy. Certainly when you think about the way the body is structured, that the right brain actually controls the left portion of the body and the left brain controls the right portion of the body, much like the yin yang symbol with the dots. So you could make an argument that the, the two hemispheres of the brain control the body so that you have uh, in the same way the, the brain is are the dots inside of the larger uh, arena of your flesh. Now, if you look at this, this is actually a diagram of the tongue and you'll notice at the top uh, where the spinal column is and then you, you come down and you follow the intestinal tract and you can see that it spirals as well. Now, that brings us to the DNA, double helix of the, uh, uh, of what, of our genetic background. So what makes you look the way you do? Why do you have the number of toes, the color of hair, all of that stuff, um, going down to even whether you like asparagus or not, it seems to be connected to the DNA. And what's interesting is we've discovered, of course, that the DNA can be affected through, uh, through epigenetics. So you can change your DNA through practice and time. So the double helix, which we see is like a zipper of two major parts. So you have the yin and yang coming together. And what's interesting is uh, those, uh, those rungs are made up of three part, three letter codons. So uh, there are four of them, much like when you look at the yin yang symbol, you have the two dots and you have the, the two, the big fish and the, the, the black fish and the white fish. So there are the four codons and that's a whole other lecture to be thought about. So the double helix is that spiral energy with rungs in between. Now, when you go even deeper into the molecular level, you get fractals. And what's interesting is that it is said, according to research, that people, when they look at fractals, they feel better. It helps them with their wellness. So what this is doing right now is it's actually affecting you visually. Your brain is taking this information in and, and ultimately it makes you feel kind of good and happy and better because for some reason that is an empowering image. Now, when we take a look at what we call Wu Qi or primal beginning, the great void, nothing is happening. There's no differentiation between yin and yang. Then something happens. That's like the big bang. Boom. There's a point of something. And so Wu Qi at the top of this image, no extremity. There's, it's void. Then as soon as there's movement, that's Tai Chi. As soon as you start moving, that's Tai Chi. Something forward, something back, something left, something right, something up, something down. And here we see it as the simple spiral. Then you go a little bit to the bottom of this diagram and you have the diagram of the ultimate power, the, the Tai Chi 2, which is the, the, the most accurate term for the yin yang symbol. So again, it has, uh, it has a, a bit more complex shape than the simple si spiral, but nonetheless, it, uh, it, it'll make sense. And when you think about how we have progressed in time with our understanding of yin yang, in the very beginning, it was uh, thought of as the mountainside that was lit in the morning becomes dark in the evening. So you have light and dark of a mountain because of where the sun is. So it's again, movement. Movement of the sun was the first 
kind of one of the first things that we realized gave us yin and yang as a quality of a way of understanding the universe. And banners in the wind, that also was uh, uh, one of the early ways of looking at, uh, uh, at yin and yang qualities. So when we go back to this image now, you take a look, we got Wu Qi at the top, and then the first differentiation, that moment where there's a point where something's all gathered in, and then it goes boom, and it becomes a separation into opposites. And everything starts to, to, to do that. And so we end up here with uh, something that's all yang and something over on the other side, which is all yin. That's the great yang, great yin. And then we have the tai chi, the grand ultimate, the balance. And that's really where we all want and need to be. And we go down below that and you have the first changes of the, the wuxing and the five elements. Now, if you look at that, that number system is the Fibonacci number system again. It, it's going to keep coming up. And it's a good thing for all of us to know because it is part of that pattern. So one, two, uh, one and one is two, two and one is three, three and two is five, five and three is eight. Oh, and lo and behold, there are eight, uh, uh, eight trigrams in the Bagua. So there we have it. Then beyond that, the 10,000 things. It's like too many things to, after 10,000, who can count anymore? That's just everything. So the symbol itself is the roadmap that we follow in this pattern. So the Chan Si Chen is tracing the yin yang symbol, the Tai Chi Tu. In this case, this would be uh, for the left hand and you would trace it with your left hand going up the outside left, coming inside between the black and the white with your palm up. At the center, your palm would be up between the two dots and then you drop down and your thumb would lead you to the bottom and then all the way around the circle with your palm outward. And we'll play with that a little bit later. So now here is the Bagua and again, another examination of the yin yang symbol in its uh, initial stages of symbolic transformation. Then, there are all sorts of beautiful versions of the yin yang symbol of the Tai Chi Tu. And uh, this one is calligraphy and photographs uh, combined to make a really interesting version of it. Now, when you look at uh, the soul is a circle, as Plato said, the limited self, the ego is like, is the square in the top portion. So it thinks it's the center, but it's only the center of about a, a tenth. Uh, so the conscious mind is really only about a tenth of the overall mind. And the ego is only a portion of that consciousness, of that conscious mind. So when you actually go deeper, instead of identifying our personality with the, the center of the ego, when we go deeper, like into our Dantian, the point is the center from which all energy comes. So all energy also means all movement because in order for something to be moving, it has to have energy. So all energy comes from the center. Now, okay, we're gonna get to that in a moment. So uh, Luke, I think that was uh, uh, about, maybe that's good for the first section. Is that make sense to you? Is it good time for good questions? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, wow. Oh, actually, um, let, let, me, let me do one more thing here before sure. we go into questions, because I wanted to do this first. So as a test, I'd like you to do this. Uh, point your index finger, doesn't matter which hand, up to the sky, put it above your head. Look up and looking at it, make a clockwise circle. One, two, three, four, five, six, and keep going. Keep your finger pointing to the sky and bring it down. So the finger is still pointing up and you're still making that clockwise circle and bring it down to at least the height of your heart while it's still making that circle and look at that circle that it's making right now and what direction is it going? If you've done this according to plan, it's going counterclockwise. Now, 
Keep that counterclockwise circle going up, keep your finger pointing up and keep it going up until it's above your head. And again, what direction is it going now? It is going clockwise again. It never changed if you did it correctly because contained within everything is its opposite. Yang contains yin, yin contains yang, and vice versa. All opposites are a continuum of oneness. Up and down are the polarities of height. Left and right are the polarities of width. Forward and backward are the polarities of depth. For example, up and down. If you're standing up and you release, you have to release your muscular, muscular control enough, you have to relax enough to go down. So you have to release. That's different than pushing up, which you have to do to get up. So to push, to get yourself to go up, you have to push down. To go down, you have to release your upheld position. That's total opposite. When you shift, if you're going to step to the left, you have to push to the right. If you're going to step to the right, you have to push to the left. If you want to step forward, you have to push back with that foot. If you want to step back, you push forward with the other foot that's grounded. So great question is up and down, where does it begin? It's all from some relative point, some point within you that allows you to think of up and down. So what is it? Up could be above my head or up could be above, my, above the ground, my, my feet and up. So anything above the ground would be up, but above my head, that's different. So where am I perceiving it from? Usually people have this quality of looking out and they're perceiving things from their eyes. That's the place that is so common for most of us is to mostly pay attention visually. However, there's a lot of other information going on. And part of that is where are we in space? So what is the boundary of up from down? Where does that begin? Where does the left and right begin? For example, if I'm facing you and I say, okay, everything to the right. Well, your right is an opposite of mine because if I step to the right, you're stepping to what looks like left to me, right? So in essence, it's all a quality of what you're looking at and where you are looking at it from. So where does forward and backward leave off, it's all somewhere in the central axis of you. It always will refer back to your center because um, uh, as, as we know, it has to do with what your perspective is. So where does forward and backward have their exchange? What is the boundary of left to right, right? Where does up begin and down leave off? It's all from the perspective of the center and in quantum physics and in infinite cosmos, all places are the center of the universe. So that's a good place to stop for questions, I think. Um, thank you, David. Thank you. Anyone want to share your experience about uh, spiraling energy? in your body, in the nature, in the cosmos? Well, I, I enjoyed the, the, the presentation. Um, I don't understand a lot of it, but I did understand some of it. And I did like the description of the spiraling and then um, showing how within the body there, there are different spirals and the, the fingerprints. I, I never even thought about that, but you're absolutely right. Those things do exist, it's just that I, I've never thought about them, but they make a lot of they make a lot of sense. And then, um, well, looking at things in nature that have a curl, like the snail and the snake, um, it, it just seems to be connected in some way. I'm not really sure, but I I do think believe that there is a connection. And then even when you talked about the, the opposites, like when you stand up, you, you push down. And the older we get, the more we tend to do that, you know, because we need that extra assistance for some of us. But Tai Chi does enable us to have to build the strength in the thighs and 
and in the in the legs and in in the body, and that does help a lot. And, but but you, we're still pushing down, but it's not as noticeable. You know, the more strength we have in the body, that pushing down isn't as 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 noticeable. But um, one question I had was about the the energy in the body is the chi that comes up, I, I think from the earth, does it also come, come, come down? So is there any spiraling related to the chi? Yes, absolutely. The, uh, uh, let me see if I can, I have one of uh, Master Joe, I have Master Joe's book, The Tao of Tai Chi Chuan, it's a really old version. Uh, and if you can see that, that gives a demonstration in this diagram of the, the Chen Su Chen, how the energy travels through the body, around the body. Can you see that okay? Yes. Very good. So that's, um, that's happening inside your body. I didn't even talk too much about that as far as what we do in our movements, right? So the quality of the turning, when we do it in 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 the Chan Su Chen, you'll see that it's 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 a whole body movement. So that any time you move one body part, everything moves. Like uh, one of my teachers used to say, uh, Chung Yong Al Huang used to say, "Ah, oh, I move my little finger, and the whole universe trembles." <laughs> You know, and and it's the butterfly effect. It's like when we move in harmony with the universe, following the spiral pattern, following the movement of the Chan Su Chin, then we are invoking the power of the Milky Way galaxy, of our DNA, and that lining up puts us in a particular energetic connection, which I would say amplifies all of your internal workings to its higher frequency, because think of frequency as a wave pattern and a spiral is a wave pattern, right? So when you begin to look at that, your frequency is being enhanced and aligning with the macrocosmic orbit as well as the microcosmic orbit. And so your energy is now aligning with that. And there will, will accrue so many wonderful and powerful and beautiful experiences out of that, one of which is just more power. Uh, someone the other day said they, they were in class. He had his first Tai Chi class and he came away and he said, oh, you know what? I felt so good the next day and the next day. And the next day, he said, I, I was just, I was amazed. I've never had Tai Chi before. And I, I was just amazed at how good I felt. And that's, that's someone who's now connecting with that vibrational rate, having lifted to a higher peak, you know, and how good that feels to be in that modality. So great question. Thank you, Elizabeth. Anyone else? Anyone else? Any share? Or question? Okay, Glinda, Glinda, and uh, Bibi. This is just a little fun thing. <laughs> um, well, last time we talked about spirals, I mentioned my cat curls up in a spiral to sleep. But as you were talking about spirals, I thought of my violin. And you know, if anyone knows what a violin looks like, you probably do. But at the there's the neck of the instrument and the body. At the top of the neck of the instrument, it's always, it's called the scroll mm -hmm. because it is also in a spiral, the shape of the scroll. And every part of the violin has a purpose as far as the sound. And if you think about the way the strings are wound on the pegs as you tune it, it's as you turn the peg, it all goes into a spiral. And on the top of the violin, the openings on the top of the violin, it's 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 in opposing S shapes, but at the top and the bottom of the S shape, it goes into a spiral. But how all of these things are constructed affect 
the sound of each different violin, they're all very different from each other, depending on how they may, how they're made. So I just thought that might be something of, of interest and kind of a fun. And as far as spiraling in, in Tai Chi, the way I've learned Tai Chi and probably all of you is that the movement of up and down and side to side or forward and back, it's all one spiral movement. And it's often helped me trying to get the form right, thinking of those spirals. So thank you, David. <laughs> oh, thank you, Galinda. Billy, Billy, you want to share, Billy? Yes, 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 thank you. Um, uh, again, David, uh, <laughs> very good, very good. Good presentation as always. Uh, I just love where you take it to. Uh, I, you know, as you know, I, I also studied with Master Joe uh, at the Tai Chi Farm, and uh, and he uh, never brought it to the level that you have. He had different level, but not to where you brought it to. But um, I, I just wanted to share this picture that I was given to me by someone from the farm talking about spiraling energy. I have it hanging up here in our studio about the redwood tree. And if you could see the redwood tree, you could see from the base of the root, the bottom, as it rotates all the way up, trying to look for, trying to get to the sky. And you see, it's, it's one dynamic turn all the way up. It's San Chu Chen going all the way up to the sky. And if you stood next to this tree, you would actually see the dimensions of that movement. It's just, it's just gorgeous. So uh, Master Joe always taught us to do, as he has obviously, you've taken that to that level, is to research it, uh, to um, practice it, and see what it teaches you, because that's the other thing. The, it's just not about, um, it's not about just doing San Chu Chen, it's, it's about doing the universe because there's so much uh, that's hidden within that diagram uh, of San Chu Chen. And as you, as you brought it out, um, it, 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 is, it comes from the first movement in, in a way. So, so yeah, so um, Master Joe uh, very uniquely took that diagram. As you see in the back, I have pretty much what Master Joe had hanging in his studio uh, when he would talk Tai Chi and, and, and diagram. And if you look at the bottom one, um, if you can see it clear enough, he merged them into one where you would practice the diagram and the continuation of both yin and yang and clockwise and counterclockwise, which was a, uh, a, a you know, a beautiful, beautiful, for me, a beautiful uh, enlightenment of, of, of not just, I, I never looked at it in the way of Tai Chi because I was too new at it at that time, but I could see nature. I could see nature right away. And so um, I just love your presentation. Um, it's just, as, as always, I, I can, I, I've, I've heard it before and I can, and I wish I could hear it more and more and more all the time, but it's, uh, it's, it's just very nice. Thank you so much. Thank you, Billy. Robert. Um, yeah, let me think. Um, I try and be pragmatic. I am day by day increasingly cynical. I am highly influenced by a minor character in Robert Heinlein's Stranger in a Strange Land, the woman who was a, oh, I forgot what it's called, a true witness, I think was the phrase. What's the color of that house? That house is white on the side that I can see. So whilst I, obviously I enjoyed everything you've done so far and I hope you'll enjoy the rest but I my not concern not worry not my point of view is um correlation is not causation I am happy that all those spirals exist I would want to see I, I would want to have a chat one-to-one -one with God or become God, all knowing, all powerful, in order to actually be able to acknowledge that the multiple spirals that you indicated are more than 
just an efficient way of doing something. Um, so, so I'm I'm looking forward to the next bits. Carry on as far as I'm concerned. Well done. Yeah, thank you. And I, I, I'm not to say that it's not just the pra exactly the practical thing, but that's that's the miracle of it. You know, <laughs> is that it, this is what it does. Uh, you know, this is this is how it works. Whether it's the cause or the effect, that's that. And does it matter as long as we are riding that wave? Like if you're surfing. It doesn't matter whether it's one thing or the other that makes that surf go. You're on your board and you're you're traveling. You're yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. Dave. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. David, you can go into the next section. Okay. There. Okay. So uh, that's just what we did there. Uh, all places are the center of the universe. That's that's what physics tells us. So that is just a very interesting thing. So Chan Jing is a full range of motion moving meditation that follows the roadmap of the Tai Chi Two, invoking balance and flow. So invoking balance and flow. The organic spiral pattern of the Chan Si Jing cultivates qi while liberating the mind as Tai Chi principles manifest clarity. Calm, clear-headed action confounds misunderstanding and dispenses with the obstacles that distract from union. Once you develop a further acquaintance with the process of flowing along the mapped path of the Tai Chi Tu, you align the inner microcosmic self with the outer cosmic self, and voila, like magic, you begin the powerful attunement of the psychophysical self with the great way. So in other words, it's a way of tuning in, aligning with, and hence benefiting from that flow that wave and surfing that wave. And by following this path, you harmonize body, mind, and spirit while inviting the universe to work through the wholeness of your being without resistance. So relaxing, finding the flow is the key to what makes this really dynamic because you're following this road map and the road map is not the road, you are the road and you are the driver. So by relaxing and following the way, you become as calm as the eye of the storm and access the power of the outer tempest's force. So this is an example of the handwork in Chan Su Chen, according to uh, this Chen uh, uh, document here. Then when we look at this movement, I wanna show you in picture form, read left to right, This is taking us through the pattern, which has up and down, left and right, forward and backward. And uh, this was taken at the Master Joe Memorial uh, where I was doing a teaching on Chan Su Chen. And uh, here I'm doing a combination of the two arms at the same time. Now, I'd like you to place your attention for a moment on the lower right-hand corner at like, I guess it would be, five o'clock, 4.30 on that, uh, that map there. So active relaxation of mind and body. And of course, that's the first thing. It's active uh, and it's active relaxation. And so you're using your mind and your body. And then through time, it becomes, you start to amplify it into more of an aerobic exercise after you've done an initial training of relaxing your body and using your mind to follow the pattern. And through that practice over time, your muscular skeletal strengthening and flexibility begins to, uh, to happen. You find greater strength, you find greater flexibility, you find greater openness. As uh, one of my, as Harry was taking over my class, for me today, uh, he mentioned that to the students there that uh, go little by little, and then a little progress, a little progress, like Master Joe used to say. So then natural freer breathing, we pay attention to our breath and breath changes consciousness. This is well known, it has a profound effect on the physical body, as well as the mental body. Then 
your social interaction and community. So when you're playing by yourself, that's one thing. That's you developing, cultivating your chi. When you do this in a group, it amplifies the power of each individual because one and one is more than two in this case, uh, because there is the field of energy that you have by yourself and the field that they have by themselves. And then when you combine it, there is a, a proportional transformation of an us-ness of the field of energy. And so there's more to play with. Socially, then, we connect with another person or persons and we, we open ourselves. Then uh, we rise up to the next level and, and embodied spirituality, philosophy, and ritual. Our daily practice, our kung fu, if you will, of our kung fu of uh, of our Tai Chi Chuan uh, and our Qi Kong is a way of putting into the body the spiritual nature or accessing the spiritual nature. And uh, the, the philosophy itself is embodied in the ritual of our daily practice. In fact, uh, uh, I would say that a, a form is a container for the Tai Chi principles. Then we go up to the top at 12 o'clock, we have awareness, mindfulness, focused attention. So the more that you open your awareness, the more mindful you are in the process of doing that, the more focused your attention is, the more profoundly altering the work becomes. And then we go into intention and belief. And there are many studies that show that belief creates change in the body. When you believe, whether you believe a thing or not, it's so for you. So, uh, that, you know, it, 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 there, there may be higher truths about certain things, but whether you believe something or not, it will have an effect. So just how it's called the placebo effect on one. So if you tell someone it's a, a pill that will heal you and they take it and they go, great, and I feel better, they're, they're healed because of their mind and that has power. So that's going back to number 12, at the top, awareness, mindfulness. So the use of the mind through intention and then expectation. There's the idea of something to be expected as a result. You, you kind of know by the time you do it once, this feels good. Or you might feel like, wow, I need to work on that because I need to stretch more. So the ex expectation of improvement uh, comes. And so you do because you start to believe by having the imagination to think it and intend it. And then we go down to dynamic structural integration. And that's what we're here to discuss ultimately here today, that the, the, the flow of this exercise, the Chan Su Chen, following the roadmap of the Tai Chi Tu, is a, a, a dynamic structure, and we are integrating that through the process of movement. And the process of movement is doing the very thing that is happening, whether we are participating in it or not. In other words, uh, we have fingerprints, we have hands. So these, these spirals are already existent within us, but are we using them to their utmost degree? We have fractals ultimately inside us on the molecular level. We have DNA. We don't even know what that looks like from our body view because it's, it's so tiny and in, inward. So we kind of have to believe it's there because we've seen it in pictures that are said to be of that or renditions of it. So our dynamic structural integration is using our mind. In this case, I'm going to ask you to connect from your DNA, from your molecules within your body, all the way up to the galaxy black hole at the center. And all of that is going to be embodied just pragmatically and practically by simply following the pattern, which will basically open your musculature, open all of the gates of your body, all of the, the joints. And you'll notice that all of the joints have a lot of acupuncture points around them, a lot of lymph nodes around them. That's the way we're structured. And here, uh, it, it, it's each joint is uh, attended to with the, the movement because of where we put our locus, where we put our focus of attention on the center of a joint always connecting to that black hole at the center of your body, the Dantian. So um, 
that's kind of the end of that. So let me see. Uh, and there, that last slide. Um, uh, how do I do this? There. There we go. Stop share. There we go. Back to y'all. So, uh, uh, Luke, do you want to stop there? You want me to to go ahead and go into uh, some sharing of the 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 movements? Yes, please, please, David and uh, and uh, Harry, you can do the demonstration. Okay, uh, great demonstration of the movement, inspiring movement in the maybe in the martial arts application or great. in the routine of the Tai Chi. Excellent. Uh, thank you. Thank you. So. Um, I will just start at the very beginning of, uh, of our Chen form, and it begins in Wu Qi, where in, we spread the toes and connect. We connect the pads behind the toes, the outside edge, the heel, the bubbling well point, drawing the energy up from the bubbling well point and rooting down with all of the other nine points in each foot. Soften the backs of the knees, tuck the tailbone, tuck the chin, ball of energy underneath each arm, ball of energy inside each hand, lengthening up to the crown, tip of the tongue on the roof of the mouth. Chin tuck, tailbone tuck. Then spiraling down, we gaze left. Spiraling up, spiraling down, we gaze right, open left, center, horse stance, then shifting left, turning left, sinking down, articulating the right arm, thumb in, stretching back, half circle rise, stretching above the head, Coming inside the S, palm up, sinking into the legs, pinky leading, sinking deeper as you point to the back corner, thumb leading now as we spin the whole sphere up over the top and back down, pointing to the back corner. So there's depth to the sphere. It's not two-dimensional. Half circle rise to the top. S descent, sinking into the legs, getting a full opening and closing, a folding in, dropping down, unfolding out, rising up, thumb leading during the second half of the movement. Then my right shoulder, all the while thinking of keeping a ball of energy between the knees. You come inside the S, same height, drop over, articulating the shoulder down around the bottom, around the sphere, and back down. Shifting over to the other side, half circle rise, articulating the shoulder, which is the center of its own movement, whereas the arm had the center of the shoulder as its locus. And then elbow. Half circle rise, wiping the sweat from the brow. The elbow leads forward, forearm releasing slowly. Elbow leads up, forearm stays relaxed. And the other elbow rising up, wiping the sweat from the brow. There's an active arm in this case and the arm that's not moving on its own much is just relaxing and then around the sphere and down. Then hand, fingers rise up. The locus for the hand movement, pinky leads into the fist, thumb leads out, is the wrist. Of course, all of it is connected to the movement of the Dantian. Left hand now, fingertips lift up over the top. S descent, sinking into the legs. Pinky leads into the fist. Wrist bent, thumb leading out, dropping to the bottom. Coming up over the top and back down. Then the whole arm close around the back of the head, thumb from ear to ear and back, 
pinky leads into the fist, face delivers fist to shoulder, thumb leads out of the fist, back of the hand touches the thighs, elbow stays close, thumb touches ear, base of the skull, jade pillow, down the side and back to center. Other hand rising up around and along the base of the skull with your thumb, elbow leads in, pinky leads into the fist, face delivers fist to shoulder, thumb leads out of the fist, back of the hand caresses the thighs, elbow stays close, thumb touches ear, base of the skull, along the side of the arm. Then the lower body, dropping the hip, articulating it down, bringing it forward and up, over the top and back, inside the S forward, around the bottom of the S down and back, over the top and back down. Then other hip, half circle rise up over the top. Inside, sorry about that, inside the S around the bottom, come up over the top and back down. Then right knee, half circle rise, S descent, full circle, Other knee, half circle rise, S-shaped descent, full circle, feet, toes in to start, toes up and out, toes down and heel coming in, toes up and in for the circle, left foot toeing in, half circle rise, S descent, toes down, toes up and in for the circle. Then the whole leg, toes in to start, half circle rise, S shaped descent, full circle. Other side, toes in, half circle rise, S shaped descent, full circle. Then right arm begins, left arm begins, right arm S descent, left arm S descent, full circle with the right, full circle with the left. And then we do that on the other side. Now to go into the next version is the walking version. We'd start with the single arm version, shoulder strike, it's a half circle rise up, Warding off, squaring the hips, rocking back, S descent, palm up, roll back, come down around the bottom, cat stance, up over the top, and back down. Left arm, same thing, shoulder strike, ward off, rock back, roll back, twist, shift, cat stance, empty step. Then after we've done this successively for a while, we add in both arms, shoulder strike, ward off, rock back, roll back, twist, shift, cat stance, empty step. Then after we would practice that version, then we would go to a flat version where we go forward shoulder strike. Now it's like a tall grass movement coming in on the S, rocking in on and lowering the hands here, twist the foot, push out, cat stance, empty step. Then we would do it with the palms up, shoulder strike, ward off, rock back, roll back, twist, shift, cat stance, pushing out, offering a gift, empty step. And then we would do a combination. So it would be press, palm down and palm up, rock back, roll back. And then we would go right into another press, twist, change hands, and we'd start the other way. So what happens is you have the pattern moving uh, in a progressive fashion until you find that it does actually generate all of the Tai Chi forms.
Uh, so not all forms focus much on the Chan Su Chen. Primarily Chen style does. It is in all Tai Chi, but it was not concentrated on for a long time in some of the others. And at one point there was a moment uh, at, at one of the uh, uh, symposiums where someone asked about Chan Su Chen to each of the grand masters and they each said how important it was and then unfortunately didn't progress to talk about it at all. So it was like, everybody went, that's so important. It's the most vital, important thing. And then they didn't say anything that really helped anybody because it was like, it's so important. We can't even tell you about it. That was what this one guy I heard say. So I said, I'm doing a presentation on it. Come. Now, what I'd like to do is show a couple of things here. Harry, come on up if you wouldn't mind. This is my, my assistant, Harry. Um, Harry Gross. Uh, studied with me for how many years? 25. 25 years, okay. So what I'd like to demonstrate are a couple of, uh, of the movements that, uh, uh, for example, um, the, the, the initial movement of the, the half circle rise. So if he does, throws a punch, let's say, with there, that's the, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I wasn't really looking at him, I'm just moving to my center. So I come up, I just knocked his glasses off. That's the half circle rise up, which is a ward off. And then right from there, the S descent takes me right into the neck throat region or into the ear, striking in. Then right from there, I can simply step in and bring my hand around here. Okay, let's show that from the other side. So that, can, that last portion can be done in any number of ways. But, but for example, here we have Ward off, okay? This is the, the rollback motion before I start shifting back. And I come down inside that strike. And then from there, I can come around and lock him in this position. Same thing if he throws a punch to like my midsection, then I use the inside of the S, right? The inside of the S. And as that is coming in, I basically guide him to the side, in this case, I've stepped forward and then I tip and bring him around. And that's when we do marching band is what we say in our classes. Mm. So those are some of the examples. Um, another one is some chinna, like if someone grabs you from behind, let's step a little bit closer for this one. Someone grabs you behind, that's not usually the attack, that's the preparation for the attack. Usually in that case, someone might pull you and then you get punched by the time you get turned around. So the pull, you lock them on, half circle rise. Then I step back and I start my S descent. I can't go too much further there because I'll break his arm, right? And so from there, I can actually strike into there or I can continue under or marching band, right? Okay. So that is, again, that pattern. All I've added was the dot. The dot, the half circle rise, the S descent. Okay. See, if I go any further into the S descent before I drop down, then I'm going to go. So uh, grab my wrist. So another example is if someone grabs, there's the dot, you lock them on. And then in this case, half circle rise, my pinky's leading, rising up, just like. I demonstrated moments ago. I turn my waist, aha, uh -huh, turning. And then I go inside, my pinky is leading, but his arm is in the way before I can get to my full palm up position. So when I start to come towards him just a little bit, that drops him to the ground because he'll feel like that wrist is going to break if he doesn't. And that is demonstrating the power of that spiraling energy. So if you see that again, it's lock, dot, circle down, okay? And so the, all of those are examples. And, and really, if you just apply the principle of the spiraling energy, um, then you have, you have really everything you need. It, it's like a little kid, if you try to grab them when, uh, and, and do something with them, it, they'll often go, yeah, and they spiral down to the ground and they just give up, give up all their weight to the earth and they spiral down it, and you can't keep a hold of them, right? So it demonstrates that it's very natural because kids aren't trained to do that. They just tend to do it. 
So it's following the pattern. If we look at something like some potential sword work, okay, you can see a similar kind of effect. Let's say he, he's, he's thrusting in and I pair it with the half circle rise, right? And then step in and come inside here with the S descent and then the full circle, right? Or if he, if he comes in here and I do, uh, let's see, let's, let me start from, I'll do the S descent. So if he does a thrust, parry him out with the S descent, right? And then come around and be right inside to the throat with the weapon uh, by following that same pattern. So it, it's, a, th this is some of the examples. That, um, set this down. Uh, we'll get to the lower body. And these are not all of the, uh, the things. It's just some of them that I thought would be useful. For example, uh, put one foot forward. So here we've got, I'm going to demonstrate a couple of different things. This is the movement of the, the foot with the inside, the out. So when we, all this motion we have, these are all about sweeps and kicks. So for example, uh, if, if he's here, I'm going to hold on to him so he doesn't fall. That if I come in here, I can lift him in this way with my foot, with that inward per position. And he's, you okay? Yes. He's, he's all locked up there and with a minor push, he's on the ground. Or, or if I come around this way from this position, the toes, let's step back a bit. So if my toes in to start when I come around and I hook in here and there he goes again. And that's, that's the moment when you have them totally off the ground with a minute amount of force. Um, and then, put your foot, yeah, foot forward. The same position in a different manner is my toes in and then simply pulling my toes in and squatting. And I have his foot locked up with chin, foot chinna as a result of my use of chan su chen positioning. Uh, grab me from around the neck. Here again, so I'll uh, put this one around. Me. So here, if he had, say, a, a knife at my throat, like maybe he's got a knife here, whatever. He's got me a hole in this position. In this position, one thing to do is simply be the dot and follow the S descent. I drop back with my hip. I pull my hip back, pull my head out, and that's the spiral, and then lift up, and I have him locked up easy. Okay, you're right. Yes. So I think that's that's probably good. <laughs> Thank you. So that's a little bit of some martial stuff and some aspect of how, you can see how the transformation goes from the, the Chan Su Chen that we did there at first, which is the standing version, and then moving from that into, uh, into the walking version. And you begin to see that, oh, that, sp that, that spiral is in there, you know, and the shape of, is in there, right? So uh, I think this is probably a good time for some questions. Thank you, David and Harry. Thank you very much. Um, any question about the uh, how to use the spiring energy in movement for self-defense or for practice Tai Chi? Anyone jump in? Robert? Yeah. Um, oh, gosh, where to start? That was lovely. It was lovely watching the way you move. That's uh, very inspirational. So thank you for that. Um, the the lock, which was one of the first locks I learned more years ago than I care to remember, it was originally taught to me as the, the Z lock in Japanese, it's Nikio and Nikaju. Uh, at one time I knew, I don't know, 20, 25 versions of it. But one of the versions which I always described, I think it's how it was described to me as the Chinese version. The thing that was interesting about it is when you get to there with the opponent's arm, what you do is you imagine that your fingers will grow and sorry, I'm trying to stay in camera and will spiral around the arm. And the difference between a downward push and just that slight spiraling, 
Um, let us just say that your, your helper's face tends to show which one is, is more efficient. So that just came to mind because you've been talking about spiraling. Um, there was something else that I was going to comment on, but my brain only holds one idea per week. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Oh, sorry. I've remembered. I've remembered. It was. It was that. That is. Uh, that was reminiscent of Sun Style, wasn't it? Because yeah. yeah, in Sun Style they do that. And I was like, oh, I've seen that before. I've done that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm an indoor student of Sun Yong Tian, the grandmaster of the Sun Style uh, in Beijing. I, I won a first place prize with him uh, a number of years back. Uh, it was like the year or so before. He and actually, I think that same year he inducted me into the Sun Style under his. Yeah, team. my wife and I did Sun Style. I think my wife did it for a year and a half. I did it for two years, a, a number of years ago. Um, and we still practice the, the 13, which is sort of a modern flavor. Um, the 38 has kind of drifted off into the mist, and the longer form that we learn. I've forgotten how many moves are in it. 92 loads, basically. That one's like, yeah, I know I did it. No idea what was in it at all. <laughs> oh, the one thing I did like about your movement, especially at the end, you know the ones where your legs are in the air and they're wiggling around? I thought, excuse my colourful language, everybody. I thought, bugger me, I'd never be able to do that. Because despite 40 or whatever years of Tai Chi, my one-legged balance is still like awful, but beautiful movement. Thank you. Thank you. And you know, what I always tell my students is you can always touch something. It only takes two ounces of pressure to rebalance. So just to have something nearby, a chair or something, and, and then you can get the movement. But then the other way to approach it is do it as small as is necessary, maybe with your feet on the ground, instead of lifting your foot all the way up and going to the height that you might get a different exercise going where I'm doing the knee, but for example, because maybe, I, maybe I'm injured, maybe my balance is not so good, it doesn't really matter. But so when I ordinarily, I might be doing the knee like that, here, I might keep the foot on the ground and do this. Right. Yeah. Thank you for that. That's that's applicable to other things that I do. So thank you. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. I have the sun in my eyes. I can't see my screen. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to go back to the, the very beginning. Um, when you when you first met Master Joe, what do you want to learn? Uh, the choices were San Chu Chen or breathing. Yeah. Yeah. OK. So you said San Chu Chen. And Master Joe said, too bad, breathing better. <laughs> so where is the breathing in, in, in this century, Chen? Harry is sitting right here and he says, and you haven't even talked about breathing yet. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I always, uh, Bob Klein and I have had this conversation. I can't tell you how many different times over the years about the breath. The, it was like, I follow one teacher he follows another and they're exactly the opposite and i said well then they both must be right you know? <laughs> <Master> <laughs> and, and, and then i said but it's master john <laughs> but uh what what we do is this uh and i teach it both ways because ultimately what you want is a natural breath yes and Sun Yong Chen, for example, when studying the Sun style, he would always just come back to it's a natural breath, just breathe naturally. What your body is doing will tell you what you need to do to breathe. If you're moving faster, you'll breathe faster. If you're moving slower, you'll move slower. Uh, so uh, just natural breath is what is your body's ability to breathe at that time. Now, that being said, uh, I've also had teachers who've talked about, hey, we do not use our apparatus nearly enough. So the practice of breathing exercises in conjunction with movement practices will amplify your breathing ability. So that's what we do uh, often. I, it's like, it's kind of like what Master Joe did. He gave me a choice, movement or breath. So, you know, it's like, 
in the beginning, I teach the movement and then somewhere along the line, I start applying the breath to something they already know. For example, uh, Master Joe said, you, you probably, he, uh, and I don't always agree with everything Master Joe said because otherwise, you know, it, it wouldn't be transformation because he did <laughs> say, it's probably best not to teach Chan Si Chen until after someone has had uh, enough Tai Chi training to know the principles and to have some basis upon which to work. And I, I agree, but at the other point that I come with is this is foundational. And so it, it you might, I, I used to start after warm ups. the Chan Su Chen was my first go-to. I would teach that first. And that's how I set the principles with a relatively simple uh, format. There's not a lot of walking, not a lot of steps. You know, for the first portion, the standing version, you're in a horse stance. So we really basically only need to know the horse stance, except we do a cat stance at some point. But so the breath. Um, an example of, of it, I'm going to do it from a seated position, is to start with a full breath in at the very beginning as you turn and sink. That turning and sinking, that's your inhalation. Then exhaling up. As soon as you start going back, inhale. Because that would be considered, if, if you think in terms of what is yin and yang, there are, in essence, six directions here, right? So if you think from the bottom up, although we do reach back, it's rising. So the rising energy is the predominant powerful energy. So rising is exhale, going back or down, in which case we're doing both as we reach back and go down for the S, that's the inhalation. And you can inhale through the center and all the way down to the bottom. So that is one way of doing the breath. So anything descending is an exhalation. Then ascending, yeah. inhaling up. I'm sorry. Yeah. So you see, the thing is, I've been teaching, I teach it both ways. So exhaling on the way up, inhaling on the way down. So exhale up, inhale down, exhale up, inhale down. Or just the opposite. Take a breath, uh, put, push the breath out to start and inhale up. Exhale down and across, and then inhale up and back. Exhale over and down. So it's connecting the ascent or descent are the primary uh, yin and yang qualities, right? So and. So that way, anything ascending would be either a full inhalation or a full exhalation. Anything descending would be either a full exhalation down or a full inhalation down. Again, it depends on which polarity you approach the work from in the breath. Is that helpful? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That was this key. That was this key thing about the di diagram. And he did pre-birth pre with it as well, as he made sure admin in, admin out, and he breathed with that, going through the S and out. So I was just curious how, where you put it. So, so you did learn breathing from Master Joe. <laughs> but you watch him. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Indeed. I enjoyed doing this um, seated and um, the work that I, I do with clients online. Um, I can see them also doing doing this seated. If people want to stand, they can they can also do it standing. But yeah. I think it's very invigorating for people, and I think that they would get a lot out of it. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And we, we and what we find is that when we're doing seated work, I at one time took my advanced studies group through a seated version of one of the forms. Uh, that I'd been teaching in a, 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 a home, uh, an assisted living place. And when we finished, they all went, oh my gosh, that was hard work. 
it's the same work. It's it, it, just because you're sitting down doesn't mean your body's not going to have to do what it's got to do to do this to to gain to gain more power. Yeah. Could could I could I ask just a clarification? Uh, I never heard Chen Si Jing. Okay, it's a new term for me, and it sounds like you're doing spiraling and. Chen Si Jing as opposed to what? Like, what is that in contrast to was one thing I was wondering. The other thing was I've kind of had the idea that um, they, they absorb the energy and then you deliver it. Like when you you absorb it and then you deliver it. And, and you're saying that you could do it either way. You could be exhaling one way like I thought you had to exhale to deliver, to push the chi out, and you had to inhale to absorb it. And is it because it's Chen Si Jing style that you could do it either way? Uh, you had a lot of trouble trying to... Yeah. How do you exhale to begin when you haven't inhaled yet, I guess was the problem I got into. I was just... Oh well, it, you know when you're when you're starting an exercise, you're making a conscious choice to begin in some fashion, and so likewise, you might choose to begin with the inhalation or the exhalation as the starting point of the movement. So you just attune the breath to the movement, whether you're bringing, you know. So uh, as far, I, I, I too am most practiced with the sense of uh, like exhaling on the push. Uh, uh, because that's uh, a Bili, I would say that's what Master Joe would talk about the delivery of force is you know you, you do that. Uh, and yet theoretically, the, the 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 idea that when you're breathing in, you are increasing an expansion in internally. So uh, there may be some, you know, so I like I said, I've had very strong discussions. But as an exercise, uh, many Qigong sets, uh, uh, have very interesting practical differences when you inhale on an ascent or a forward movement uh, or exhale on an ascent or a forward movement. And you'll find that that sent that your set, you, you, the power of the exercise may not be different, but but the way it expresses inwardly and outwardly can be vastly different. And so that's why we should do it both ways. Yeah, I, I well, I, yeah, I mean, I, I would say first, just settle with one, get comfortable with it, and then go on from there. Robert, yes, you had... Yeah, can I just suggest, mainly to Luke, but open to anyone, that the whole issue... Uh, one of my students is a Qigong teacher, and when she... she She's a tea... Put my teeth in. She is a Qigong teacher that before she started training with me a few months ago, had never done Tai Chi. And... I teach a bit of Qigong in my class and I would always ask her for her opinion in front of the students because I think it's good for people to know and eight times out of ten the way she does it is diametrically different to the way I do it um, and that's great because definitely where breathing is concerned I, I like breathing in and out through the nose I know people that breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. There's somebody out there, I'm sure, that breathes in through their ears, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What I was getting to was I would like to see us maybe have a whole session just on breathing and discussing. I, I don't know who would lead it, but Luke, if somebody, if we have anybody in the group that, that is particularly experienced with knowing about a the physiology of breathing and then the other bits and pieces i think it's possibly subject to people saying boring go away robert um i think it could be a very interesting subject absolutely in its own right thank you thank you i will keep that keep the notes about that yes it is very important about breathing especially if you get into the meditation, the different way of meditation will um, somehow require some kind of different way of breathing in order to reach the goal of the meditation. 
Yeah, very good. I will keep the, keep the notes and uh, we try to arrange that. Okay, we have a lot of friends from Europe and uh, we give you guys chance to um, ask questions or share your viewpoint. Nicola and David Hans, um, do you want to join in into the conversation or question or share your experience? Nicola and David Hans. Uh, uh, thanks, Luke. I I'm, I'm sorry, I've missed the beginning of the meeting, so I'm, I'm a bit of a disadvantage in in, um, in contributing at the moment. But it is interesting. The only thing I, I think it, it, Chan Su Chin for me was always about the, the spiraling. Did you teach uh, those things in your class or uh, absolutely? Uh, the, the the spiraling process is is, is fundamental to all the. The, the, the flexing movements um, and the connectivity uh, in the postures. Um, and for me, what I, I try and do is use uh, uh, an outward breath of expanding the abdomen as a test for the posture as well. So if, if um, I can't relax the abdomen in a particular posture, I need to go back and look at the posture. But I agree, I did the whole thing about breathing um, is, is it's connect, for me, it's connected to Tan Su Chin. It's connected to the way we flex mm -hmm. in the postures. Um, and I think you can test your flexing by, bit, by, by paying attention to what it does to your breathing. That sound? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, maybe I pronounced that name is not correct, Nicola. Uh, turn on your audio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it is Nicola, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm afraid I joined uh, late as well, actually, and I, I just saw your wonderful demonstration, David, which was absolutely beautiful, just lovely to watch. Um, in terms of breathing, um, I can, I, well, with Wu Hao, we just have natural breath, but there is a, you kind of get into um, a flow with it. So I think the, the breath does come at the same time during any form work, um, but we tend to allow people to find their own breath, as it were, you know, not, not forcing anything on anyone. In that sense, yeah. So, so it becomes your own your own flow in that way. But the spiraling is just yeah. I have to get hold of the spiraling. It's 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 that whole three D full body. That's what Tai Chi is, isn't it? Did you teach? <laughs> did, you, did you teach a spiraling movement in the class or demonstrate to your student? How do you? Yeah, I uh, teach a a silk reeling practice, but um, they're all separate practices, almost like a bit of a qigong form in that they're separate practices that we put together, um, just exploring different um, different planes of spiraling and different parts of the body spiraling. So it's kind of, yeah. So it's like, a, it's, I really like that, what you did, David. <laughs> really like that. Lovely. Thank you. Yeah, we, we go into great depth in it in our, uh, in our DVD uh, of the Chan Su Chen. It's, it, we do all the oh. walk lessons and so okay. forth. Yeah, it's helpful. Yeah, I'm, I think I may have a look at that, actually. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, you very much. That on, on Vimeo and, uh, uh, <laughs> And, and so forth. Uh, yeah, Sue, I think. Um, can, can you hear me? Yes. Good. Um, can you say a bit about um, the Dantian and the how you train um, the, the basically the movement expressed from the Dantian? Sure. Um, well, thank you. One thing is, in essence, the Dantian is, okay. 
you can think of it as this place down here, a couple of fingers below your belly button, okay? But really, I like to think of the Dantian as a field of energy. Our, our bodies really are highly energetic. I mean, uh, uh, you know, the, the magnetic aspect of our bodies, the electromagnetic is, is demonstrated with synaptic connection, the fact that there's iron in our blood, you know, all that. And so the, the energy around us, I mean, we have a field of about three feet out in all directions for the brainwave patternings. So that is a field of energy. The heart uh, is generating a field that goes out about 15 feet, except when people are frightened in which it shrinks down to practically zero. Uh, and that's why people with PTSD, by the way, uh, are so troubled uh, is that they've shrunk their heart's energy down and they're, they're, they can't let it open up again after the fear state is after the fear event is over, they're still in the fear state. And so their heart is still shut down. And that's, that's why treating people with Tai Chi is very helpful for dealing with PTSD because they develop a connection socially and internally that's profoundly safe and loving generally, I would say. So anyway, um, uh, the Dantian, the movement of the Dantian, and I'm going to focus my attention right here. So when, when we generate any particular movement, really whatever it is, and let's say I'm doing the hip movement from that, okay? That if you see this right here, there is, I, the, the basic movement of Dantian can be simply the movement, literally it's happening inside my body. It's more about this. And you can think in terms of maneuvering it so that it's a rolling, think of it as a rolling ball. And that way it has this field around it that you can play with, okay? So if you think of this and then and like the planet itself has an atmosphere in which there is a field of activity, okay? So if you think in terms of, uh, for example, we practice that when we're doing our hip movements and rolling the ball in our warmups. And so this action of the hips is generated literally right out from the center. So the center is actually rolling itself in this pattern. And the two poles of the hip sockets are in a sense driving around that rolling ball, but also are a part of that event while your hands, for example, in rolling the ball movement are playing with the field of the Dantian. And that's often why that field of energy around the Dantian when you're doing this gets the hands so charged up with chi because your hands, your hands could be any place. They could be up above, they could be any place, but you'll find that right down here, it's going to, you tend to experience a great deal of that field energy quality in your hands. Um, so I would say that really, literally all of our Tai Chi movements, like if I'm doing, uh, if I'm doing, if I'm doing, a, 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 whether it's a, Chan Su Chan, for example, if I'm doing the Chan Su Chan, then the Dan Tian is going to generate the initial movement right from here. Uh -huh. It's going to roll, and I'm going to exaggerate what's happening in the Dan Tian by thinking in terms of what's happening here. As I shift and turn and sink, that ball has rolled down. And so everything that's on the back is coming up and over and down, right? And everything mm -hmm. on the low side here on this side is coming up. So that energy is rolling. And then you, in a sense, reverse it to go up. So now this is going down. This is rising up. And it's all being generated from the direction of the Don Tien's movement. So if you see this, if you just sort of turn your body, shift your weight and lift one hip and drop the other, whether you're going back stroking or forward stroking with your hips and you let your hands roll in that fashion, you'll begin to find that you'll start to experience more and more of that chi field right in front of your Dan Tian. And of course, in back, it's the Meng Man and that's really charged by the kidneys so powerfully. Did that help you with that? 
Um, yeah, thank you. I mean, I was seeing a, what looked to me like a lot of figure of eight. Yes. And they're always very useful because where you cross, that brings a focus, doesn't it, to um, into the Dantian. Um, and interestingly enough, it's also the infinity symbol. Yes. And yes. it's also the number of Bagua trigrams, right? Oh, yeah, I suppose it is. Yeah, yeah. So it's just, um, coincidence but some people say there's no such thing as coincidence it, it's interesting i'm playing with at the moment how much focus it's useful to put on the dantian before you go to the bigger movements but anyway that's a much much bigger subject and but just what you said um was interesting thank you um david yes. you just show the uh the Dantian, the rotation of Dantian, and the, your body, whole body's very movement, the correlation, they are beautiful. But if you can demonstrate the rotation of the Dantian, Fa Jing, in Fa Jing way, then they can see the difference. If you just do the physical movement, very movement physically, and then very movement from Dantian, into farting movement, they can see the big difference there. Sure. Do you mind demonstrate a little bit? Trying to get me hurt. <laughs> Harry just said, "Are you trying to get me hurt?" Uh, no. Uh, Harry, don't worry. I buy. I already buy the insurance for you. <laughs> We're going to back up a little bit so that yeah. you, you know he he he'll have the couch in case. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to use a lot of fudging because that would be dangerous, but uh, um, uh, okay, uh, this uh, this this is going to be kind of small uh, because I, I'm going to demonstrate. So here I'm, I'm in a, a a brush knee position, okay, right right in in close. Now if I do don't if I don't use Dantian, if I'm not using any kind of rotation or movement of Don Tian, and I just think of pushing, okay, okay, that's that's one thing. But, and I didn't extend a lot, but but there it is. But but if I do a similar kind of thing, that, but I'm using Don Tian, which means my hip is going to move and it's going to roll, it's going to roll so that the hip comes, the shoulder comes in that rolling frequency, that rolling fashion, and it'll come out through the hands and with really relatively little movement. <laughs> so does that, does that make sense? So you can see the difference between the first one, which was was not using Dantian and using some other things, but then the second time using a very small movement of Dantian rolling and then letting that roll through the hip and letting it come out through the hand and so uh, the hand doesn't have to move much. It just, boom, just gets to express, bang, right? So with that, with that motion of Dan Tian and then letting it, letting the field focus and then transmit in a sense along this, along in a spiraling kind of fashion. So it's like releasing out, bang, you know? It, it happens relatively fast, doesn't look like much in the beginning, but it's like, you can start from totally just in here, you're in your stance and then, okay. And you'll find that one, when you fa jing, and this is what we talk about, fa jing is of course releasing energy, but I always like to talk about, yes, fa jing, but then bring some back, right? So you've expressed your energy out, but then accept the relaxation of that expression out as part of the event. I hope that makes sense to y'all. Thank you. Thank you very much. You bet. Thank you very much. Bye, everybody. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Take care. Everybody. Thanks, Luke. Thanks, Robert. Good night. Thank you, David. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.